it didn't take us long to get that cash, but we went looking for the loans. There is another high interest lender, but you won't find them here on the high street. This is debt that arrives at your front door. Provident Financial is a multi-million pound FTSE 250 company. Based in Bradford, it offers door-to-door -door loans at relatively high interest rates to 1.8 million customers. Last year, it made £127 million in pre-tax profits from its home credit business. This is one of their promotional videos. Their agents and those from Greenwoods, another company owned by Provident, collect loan repayments from your home. We call on one household uh, in 20 in the UK every single week. Provident dominate the doorstep lending market. Many families have used them for generations. But Panorama has been told by customers and by people who've worked for the company of concerns surrounding some of Provident's business practices. We decide to send a reporter undercover. He applies and within two weeks is invited in for an interview. He meets one of Providence district managers who explains you mainly get paid on commission and straight away it's clear there's pressure to sell loans. Everyone's targeted everywhere, right the way down the business everyone gets a target. I'll get a target of maybe I need to give 15 grand of loans out. I'll spread that amongst the agents, you might get two grand of it. If you hit your target in the month and you put customers on, you get a bonus on top of your wages. Away. He tells us the best ways to keep people repaying the loans. We don't want people bullying people, you know, you talk in a, a firm and fair way. Yeah. These agents will show you how they do it. The women are the best. Yes. They, talk, they do, the, some of them are bloody marvellous at how they get money out of people. Yeah. But they're good at it and they're nice about it. There are online exercises in the office, but most of our reporter's training is out on the road. He spent time with two women. Sam, an agent, and Joe, a manager, both working in the Northwest. They do demanding jobs with targets to meet. First, we meet Sam. She started working for Provident, having had loans with the company herself. Oh, are you Sam? Hello. I was expecting a man, were you? No, I wasn't. No, no, not at all. No. Right, how are you? She explains that we're going to go door to door collecting customers' loan repayments. Agents earn commission on the money they collect, usually between nine and six pounds for every hundred. They visit one of Sam's customers, a pensioner who's got three separate Provident loans and owes about four and a half thousand pounds. Sam collects the money. The pensioner pays Provident £54 a week to pay off her loans. So she owes an absolute whack. It was about 5,000 quid? Yes. Blimey. Does she have benefits? She's got a lot of pension. She's got some kind of disability as well. Yeah, she owes £4,485. Sam says the majority of her customers are on benefits. So she pays the 54 a week, and then but her, her pension benefits will cover that all right? Yeah, and, she, and she's been offered more money, and she's only just had one last week. Yeah, what's she been offered? She's been offered 1,200 quid. So despite already owing £4,500, she's being offered more. We found many customers who'd been sold successive loans. It can mean some customers being in debt for years, like Joseph and Mary. And when I looked out the window, I went, oh, I'm so that's my Mary. <laughs> After we filmed them undercover, I went back to meet them. They told us they borrowed £500 more than 15 years ago, but one loan turned into many. When they were struggling to pay recently, Provident reduced their weekly payments, but they say they still owe nearly £2,000. How did it feel when you got the money? It felt great. Have some money in, in your hand. And did you trust the company? I did at first, yeah. But uh, now it's uh, money, money, money. If somebody had said to you when you took that loan out, in 17 years you'll still be paying £120 out a month for this and other loans, what would you have thought? I wouldn't have believed them. You 
seems to go on and on and on. There's no, uh, there's no end to it. And we saw that happen. As well as collecting payments, agents are encouraged to sell more loans. And Sam explains how she'll do it with another customer. You're being offered twelve hundred pound, and he'll go, "All oh, right, okay, I'll have a think about that." Yeah. So that you've put the seed there, so that you know it. It can then contact you when he's ready for it. He knows that he's got it and he knows it's there, which helps you with... Because if they don't know they're being offered money, they're not going to take it, are they? I'm not. They arrive at his house. He currently owes just over £300 and hasn't asked for this new loan. £1,200 quid. Do I think £1,200 quid? And then there's money out. Am I going to pay £1,200 quid back? His current loan costs him £15 a week. Sam suggests he can pay 20 a week for the next two years, then he can afford a new thousand-pound loan. It sounds a tempting offer. In 12 seconds, he goes from worrying about how he'll pay to agreeing to a two-year loan. Good profit for Provident, and there are two rewards for Sam. One for clearing the old loan and then commission on the new one. Four days later, Sam returns with the cash. What's all hey, hey, what's all the problem here? I'm gonna tell you about it in a second. But there's a problem. He thought he was getting a thousand pounds in his hand. But he doesn't seem to realise that the balance of his outstanding loan, which is three hundred and ten pounds, is being deducted. In fact, Sam hasn't explained to him verbally the interest rate or how much he'll pay back in total. So our reporter asks her. How much will it all tot up to over two years? 2,120 quid. That's quite a lot. Yeah, that's why we do step wonders. If you think about out of, the, out of that, they've got to pay their agents. Yeah. They've got to pay the office staff. They've got to pay the big bosses. Yeah. <laughs> that's, why, that's why there's so much interest. We showed our footage to Gillian Guy. She's the chief executive of the Citizens Advice Bureau, a charity which offers help to people in debt. It's, we can give you more money, give you money. That's how it sounds. And it's not giving, it's actually selling money. So it, it feels quite misleading and quite uh, exploiting a relationship. Provident says it's always the customer's decision to take out another loan. But it doesn't always feel that straightforward on the ground. On a round with Joe, the manager, our reporter is offered inside advice on how the debt business really works. If you allow the customers to pay their account up, and then they're not customers anymore, you don't collect from them. So if they're good payers, you want to be offering them some more loans? You don't ever want to let them pay up. You heard that right. She just said you don't ever want to let them pay up. The company and the agents make money from good customers staying in debt. Away from the round, our chase for easy loans continues. So we've already got more than 500 pounds from payday loan companies that are on the high street. What we want to do now is see what else we can get from payday loan companies that operate on the internet. In the space of an hour, we borrow another two loans, each of 200 pounds. The checks appeared minimal. One company simply asked us to tick a box if we thought we could afford a loan. And there we go, 200 pounds safely secured. We're now up to nearly a thousand pounds with barely any effort. Only one in ten online loans applications are approved. There is a huge amount of data that is assessed in a very short period of time through very complex technology to ensure that when you apply for an online loan that lender knows a great deal about you and has made uh, 
a, a huge amount of calculations have taken place. Across all the loans, High Street and Internet, the interest and charges on £966 is £287. But if the company's letters defer paying for another month, we'll be looking at paying back more than £500. With debt so readily available, it's easy to see how it can slip out of control. It becomes an extra form of income. People start to see it as an income stream rather than as a credit stream. And I think that, especially if you are rolling the debt on from one, one form of credit to another, you know, that becomes difficult. We're back on the road with Sam, the Provident Agent. Her job is to collect the weekly payments, to sell new loans and decide whether customers can afford them. But these are often deprived areas and there's only so much money to go around. Customers may take on debts with other companies and it can be hard for the agents to know. And that can create problems. Oh, he's paying us. Did he get money off that bitch? Yeah. That bitch. Sam has spotted an agent from a rival company, Shoppercheck, visiting one of her customers. What happened? I've got a customer there, and Shoppercheck's just been and got money off her, and she's not paying me. I'm sorry if I offend you, I do tend to swear. A few days later, Sam calls on the customer. She's almost £4,000 in debt to Provident and is falling into arrears. If Sam doesn't collect today, the company will dock £10 from her earnings. Hello. I'm sorry, I've got no money from you. I'll have some for you. Oh, I'm sorry. No. I'm sorry. I'm sorry I haven't got any. Oh, we should have come Friday now when I saw a shopper check coming. Damn. I know I've got it next week, but I have got it this week. Right. Okay, okay. okay. Her fears are confirmed. The competition got there first. Sam calls her manager. Got some bad news for you. I'll pay next week, I'll pay next week. I'll, I'll start paying £30 every week next week. Uh, I've just got nothing this week. Yeah, because she were paying shopper check at about five. But she told me when I did her expenditure she didn't have any other doorstep lenders. She's a bitch. Professor Carl Dason helped set up and run a not-for-profit doorstep lending company. The actual agents for those organisations live on the same estates. You know, their money is often piece rate money. They depend on you repaying your debt in order for them to get paid. Uh, in that sort of environment, you know, that can create all sorts of, you know, local tensions if you don't repay. Provident says that even when customers miss payments, the amount to be repaid never rises. As our reporter's training with Provident continues, he becomes concerned about apparently vulnerable people being lent money. Joe, the manager, tells him of a conversation she had about a customer with mental health problems. Some care for this woman. Um, I'm working on her behalf and she has mental problems and... You know, she doesn't need harassing. And I said, well, who's harassing her? Nobody's harassed anybody. Hello. Hello. Later, with Joe, he visits another woman, 60-year-old Sheila, who lives on her own. She has two loans, though Joe didn't issue them. She just collects the money. So what, are you paying 40 pounds 60? No. Yeah. yeah. To two sixty. Ten on one. Yeah. Wait a minute. Okay, ten on one. But yeah. Our reporter was worried about her. Yeah. So the last place you went to, the, sm the smell was that from the house. Mm. She not look after herself properly. I don't think so. It's a shame. Industry guidelines say borrowers who may be particularly vulnerable should not be targeted or exploited. What does the chief executive of the Citizens Advice Bureau think of our footage? I don't blame the agent for that. 
because that's the mill they're in. They're, it's kind of you know, keep the money rolling in, keep people hooked. Yeah. Yeah. But there's a whole model here that is not about any social responsibility or other responsibility for what is happening to people.